All righty. Okay, well, uh, for those of you uh, that don't know me, I am Richard Stark with RV Airflow Systems. Uh, my wife, Joanne, I gave her the weekend off. She's been working really hard for the last couple of years and uh, she had an opportunity to get away for the weekend. So I encouraged her to get away. So that's why Joanne's not here. Um, so we have this great product that we have introduced to the industry and um, you know, the name RV Airflow Systems. And it, um, now I'm sure some of you online right now have, have our system in your rigs. Uh, those of you that don't, we're going to go through uh, uh, some steps, you know, what RV Airflow Systems is, what it does, and a little bit of background on um, where we started. So um, the story begins, the story begins with, uh, with our rig. We've got a 399, just like Jarrett's, and we bought our rig uh, December 2017, and our first summer in the rig, August of 2018, uh, we was in East Texas. And of course, I'm sure many of you know that in East Texas in August, it gets really, really hot. And we had all three of our air conditioners running on this rig and I couldn't pull the temperature down below 86 degrees. And so, because I was the one guilty of talking Joanne into the whole RV lifestyle, um, so yeah, I talked her into buying the rig, you know, so we bought the rig and yeah, whenever we couldn't get it comfortable inside the rig, yeah, she was not a very happy camper. And you guys know out there, a happy wife is a happy life. So, um, I had to start working on this issue and so I started checking the air conditioners and, you know, everything I checked on the air conditioners, the air conditioners seemed fine. What I noticed was that the air coming out of the air conditioner itself compared to the air that's coming through the vents in the ceiling, there was something wrong with that picture. Uh, when I zeroed in on this issue, that's what started all this. Um, I handmade a little prototype and it worked significantly better. I had a lot more air throughout the, throughout the ducting. So at that point I knew I was, I was onto something. So, I kept perfecting the design and to the point that I couldn't get the airflow any better in the rig. And um, so that's what started this whole thing. Um, uh, I've, got a, I've got a huge background. I mean, I go back 40 years in the industry um, with HVAC and I was in the appliance industry for, I don't know, 30 plus years. Um, at one point, for several years, I was a uh, technical service manager for Maytag, um, and I helped design the air delivery system in refrigerators. Um, I worked closely with engineers at that time, uh, so I've got, a, I've got a pretty good history with uh, working with air delivery systems and that sort of thing, and um, so that's kind of, that's kind of what you know, what started all this. And I knew, I mean, we're no different than any, any other full-time RVers out there. We all want to be more comfortable in our rigs and most of us chase the weather. So, you know, being more comfortable in our rigs, you know, is, is, a, is a big deal. So whenever I started this, whenever I got my air conditioners running a lot better, a lot more air throughout the ducting system, you know, I, I realized, you know, there's, no telling how many other people out there that were suffering just like we. And so we decided to start our little business, RV Airflow Systems. And um, so here we are, we've got this product on the market now. And um, so when we move forward on this little, um, uh, on this presentation, so what is RV Airflow Systems? What is this thing? Uh, Jarrett, you've got that, that video, right? So we'll give you we'll give you a quick little video on what RV Airflow system is and what it does, and then we'll continue with the presentation after that. So you got it, Jarrett. Meet Richard and Joanne. They love their RV and the freedom it gives them to explore the world, but they were frustrated at how long it took their air conditioners to cool their unit. 
with most RV air conditioners. Air flowing out of the rooftop AC unit into the ductwork creates turbulence that impedes airflow. And the ductwork layout means airflow varies greatly from vent to vent. So Richard and Joanne invented the RV airflow system, a specially designed module installed in a plenum. The space between the AC unit and the cover plate to capture 100% of the AC airflow and optimally direct it into the ductwork, improving airflow by an average of 40%. With the RV airflow system, you'll reduce the time it takes to cool your RV, increase airflow throughout your RV, and improve the efficiency of your AC system, saving money. Get your RV airflow system now and enjoy the freedom of your RV. You cool yet? Isn't that a cool little video? I like that video. Now, um, so that's basically what the RV airflow system is all about. It installs into the plenum area. In a, in a few minutes, uh, Jarrett's gonna play an install video to give y'all uh, a good idea of where it installs and, and that sort of thing. From all our testing, <coughs> since we have a Grand Design rig, it only made sense for us to talk to Grand Design uh, at the factory and see if they was interested in this. And uh, at, at last year's National Grand Design Rally, uh, that's whenever we approached Grand Design, they came, a bunch of upper management came into the rig and I turned on air conditioners and gave them a good demonstration. Next thing we know, Grand Design was wanting us to come over to their uh, factories and do some testing uh, on their turf. And that's what we did. Now, Keep in mind, you know, airflow throughout different model rigs and different ducting systems is going to vary. On average, what we see, what our studies have proven, that on average we get about a 40% increase in airflow into the ducting out your ceiling vents. That's a huge, huge increase. Um, so Grand Design was pretty excited about that whenever we finished the testing. Now, the next thing we ended up having to do. You know, Grand Design was wanting at that time to start including our product in, the, in their new builds. Um, but we needed to talk to Eric Sell, which is who makes Coleman air conditioners. Uh, so Grand Design arranged a meeting with Eric Sell and us at RV Airflow Systems. <clears throat> we introduced our product to Eric Sell. They wanted to test um, our product. Grand Design needed to make sure that we was not going to um, cause any issues, any warranty issues with our Excel or Coleman air conditioners. So that's what we did. We gave, uh, we gave some product to Air Excel to go back to their labs and do a bunch of testing. Well, they kept our product for about two months. And finally, finally, after two months of their testing, we got a green light from Air Excel. So our product is fully tested with Air Excel, Coleman air conditioners, uh, not to uh, not to avoid any kind of warranty issues. Um, as of June, well, last month, this is July now, as of last month, Grand Design has been installing our product in all their new rigs. Uh, they've been kind of ramping up, you know, they started out with one line and then a second line and so forth. But um, yeah, Grand Design is including our product in their new rigs. Uh, so that says a lot for all the testing, uh, all the design the work that we have done on our side through uh, RV Airflow Systems. Now, um, I'm trying to trying to look at some notes while we're talking here, just to make sure I don't miss anything. <laughs> um, so, increasing airflow throughout the ducting system. You know, one of the best ways to explain this, I guess. Let's take a 15,000 BTU air conditioner, for example. Um, a 15,000 BTU air conditioner currently or before without our product, by the time the air from that air conditioner gets into the ceiling ducts, that airflow, that air velocity has been reduced down to about a 9,000 BTU capacity. Well, that really uh, hurts the performance of the air conditioner. And one of the other common things that we see in the industry is evaporators freezing up. And, you know, that's, that's caused by lack of air flowing across the evaporator coil. 
So whenever we virtually double the airflow across the evaporator, that almost completely eliminates evaporators freezing up. Whenever you also double that much air across the evaporator coil and increase the velocity through the ducting, that also means that that rig can cool down much, much faster. Um, it, it's, it's been a huge, huge improvement. And um, so, yeah, delivering that much more air throughout the ducting system yeah, air conditioners don't have to work near as hard. Um, um, now, recently, we were still down in Arizona. And um, so my front air conditioner, my bedroom air conditioner is a 13.5, the garage air conditioner is a 13.5, and the center air conditioner is a 15. And I, I remember one day specifically, it was like 102, 103 degrees outside. And of course we have full heat load coming in on this rig. And I had just the bedroom and the garage air conditioners running, just the little two 13 fives. And I was keeping the rig at 75 degrees inside with no problem with two air conditioners, two of the small air conditioners. So whenever you double the, the velocity of the air throughout the ducting, it really makes a difference in the performance of the air conditioners. They just don't have to work near as hard. Um, so that's, um, you know, I can't say enough about the performance of it. I mean, we could go on and on and on. Um, now, originally, um, now the two rallies that we have been to, we, we was at the Corsite rally and then, of course, Jarrett, your rally in uh, Las Vegas. The, the product that we was selling back then was basically handmade. You know, uh, putting a product on the market in mass production is, is an expensive thing to do. Uh, but we had to get started some way. So our original product, the way it was manufactured, was very, very time consuming, very labor intensive. Whenever things progressed with Grand Design, whenever Grand Design finally came back and says, yeah, we definitely want to include your product in all our new builds. Well, then we faced a little issue about volume demand. There was no way we could meet the demand from Grand Design with our product being handmade. So we teamed up with a company in Elkhart, Indiana, a company called uh, Rebel Products. Scott Ternowski is the president of Rebel Products we teamed up with them, we presented our product to them actually, and told them, look, we need to get this product in mass production. I knew from the very start, I wanted this product to be uh, molded, uh, shape molded. And so teaming up with Rebel Products gave us that ability. So this new product that's on the market, our commercial product, so what we're calling it, um, is molded and that's what's going into production, that's what's going into all the new Grand Design rigs. The, the new commercial product is made of three pound EPS, expanded polystyrene, and it's extremely durable. It is so much better than the old handmade product. Um, it doesn't contain any CFCs or HCFCs. Um, there is no formaldehyde in the product. Um, and being such a high density product, we don't have to worry about any mold issues, bacteria growing. Um, and of course, you know, being this type of EPS, it's, um, it's hundred percent recyclable. And, um, so we don't have to worry about any kind of contaminants sticking to the product, I guess is kind of the bottom line. And, um, now there's something that we wanted to think about as we moved forward with this new product. What we found out with the new commercial product that we have, it offered a little bit better air velocity into the ducting. It performed better than the old product did. Also, whenever it comes to sound level, uh, just installing the kit alone, even the old kit that was, uh, that was manufactured, uh, there's a significant drop in noise level. This new product, the commercial grade product, 
is actually quieter than the older product as well. Because this new commercial grade product is so much better, what we want to offer everybody that has our has the original product, uh, this is something you're probably not, not ever going to see in the industry ever again. Uh, now, even back then, we told, you know, we've advertised our product is um, our warranty on the product. It's a lifetime unconditional warranty. All right. Because we're so proud of this new product, anybody that has our old product, the first model of our product, we want to replace that product with the new product free of charge. So everybody can write that down. All right. Um, just contact us, you know, go to our website. You can contact us in several different ways. And I'm also going to get out and give out my personal cell phone number. Um, so Jerry, if you don't mind typing this into the chat part. Uh, so my phone number is 512 718-6056. All right, there you go. I appreciate that, Jarrett. Um, yeah, we want to replace all our old product out there um, because, as I said, this new product is so much better. And, you know, we want to offer our, our customers out there the best product we can possibly uh, deliver. So, you know, customer service is everything. It's important to us that, that we take care of everybody. And um, so, like I said, you know, just contact us, anybody that has the old, uh, the first series product, I guess we'll call it. Uh, we're gonna replace that product for you free of charge. Uh, we're, all gonna, we're also gonna be sending out a mass email to all the, all the previous customers. Um, to let them know that we're gonna replace the product as well, free of charge. Um, so having the new product molded like it is, you know, we can, we can meet any kind of volume demands from Grand Design or any other manufacturer. So we appreciate everybody's support. Without, without the support, you know, it's pretty hard to grow a company, um, but we've been pretty fortunate. You know, Jarrett, you've helped us out a lot in uh, getting the word out there about our product and we're pretty proud of it. Um, so um, now also with this virtual rally, we're gonna, we're also gonna offer a discount, all right? Now this is gonna be a 20% discount off your order. If anybody wants to go to the website and order product today, um, uh, Jared, if you would write, type this in as well. So there's a promo code for this 20% discount the promo code is simply GD Virtual Rally, all caps, no spaces. And that's the code, just GD Virtual Rally. So whenever you go to the website to order, just type that into the, into the discount field and that'll get you a 20% discount on the product. And um, so, like I said, you know, we, we appreciate everybody's support. Um, in the beginning, um, you know, there, there's a lot of, you know, this type of product, it almost sounds too good to be true. So I can't say that it's been a struggle to get the word out there, but it's kind of hard to believe, you know, that a single product can offer this much, uh, uh, this much enhanced performance of the air conditioners. But it really does, and you know, Jarrett has has our product in his rig as well. So anyway, so I guess that's it on my side, Jarrett. Um, I now we wanted to show an installation video, so Jarrett has our YouTube installation video. I spent quite a bit of time designing this to be easy to install. The average person can install this pretty pretty easily, 15, 20 minutes maybe at the most. Um, so. You don't have to climb up on the roof or any of that stuff. Everything, you can install this product from the inside of the rig only. Um, so if you don't mind, Jared, let's, let's play that install video. Hi. 
Hi, my name is Richard Stark. I'm with RV Airflow Systems, and today we're going to do a little video, a little installation video on uh, installing our kit on a Coleman Mach 3. This particular kit will fit a Coleman Mach 3, Mach 15, and a Mach 10. Um, uh, the rig that we're working on today is a Grand Design 399. Um, so we're going to dive into the instructions on this. So we're going to we're going to read the instruction sheet. So, yeah, I have to put my glasses on. All right, so the first step, tools required. We're gonna go over that. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna call out the tools required. We're gonna, we're gonna show the tools. Um, now, down in the main living area on most rigs, you know the ceiling's a little bit too tall, so we have to use a step stool. Um, I like using a cordless drill. It just makes the installation a little bit quicker. Uh, number three, we want a number two Phillips screwdriver or a drill bit, you know, so we can use it on the cordless. Uh, most of the screws that we run across in the RVs now are a square drive, so we've got a square drive here. Now, as we go through the installation, this is a 5 16 uh, socket drive, which whenever we go through the installation, we'll show where this is used as well, okay? So, on um, the next part, uh, the parts of the kit. So this guy right here, this is the main kit itself, and these are what we call duct inserts, and there's two of these. A little bit later on in the video, whenever we get into this in, in the installation process, we'll show you where these go and how they install. So this is what you receive in the kit, and of course, your instruction sheet. So let's start disassembling this thing. So on these Coleman ceiling assemblies, you've got two little tabs here for the filter. So you kind of push them forward and unsnap it and then you grab the end of the filter and slide it out of course the same thing on the other side all right now on the on these Coleman's the cover plate here you've got four screws you've got one in each corner and these are square drives so we're going to remove these four screws and lower this cover down Some of these screws we're going to be reusing, so set them aside. All right, now the next part we've got to remove is the air shower cover, okay? Now, some of the uh, some of the rigs, you know, of course you can see the two screws here. Some have another screw in the back and one up front. This one here only has two screws holding it, so let's pull these guys out. So one thing I want to talk about here as well, since we're taking down this, this air shower cover, uh, our kit eliminates the air shower portion of this, um, of the ceiling assembly. So this our air shower cover right here, this is going to be discarded. We're not going to be reusing this part. So we're going to set this guy aside. Okay, so now we have exposed the, the entire plenum area. So the next step here in the disassembly is removing the anchor bolts for the air conditioner on each corner. Now these bolts are 5 16 head or 5 16 size. So we're going to grab our little socket drive here. We're going to This goes a lot quicker whenever you're using cordless drill. Of course, whenever you're taking down the last one, hold the opposite side so it doesn't fall on your head. Okay, of course, since that's the anchor plate for the air conditioner, we're going to be reusing this, so set it aside. All right, so the next thing we're going to see is this separator plate on the inside here. Now that we've got the, uh, the anchor plate out of the way, we simply pull this out. We are not going to be reusing this separator plate um, as well, so we can discard this. All right, so the next thing we want to take a look at, we want to 
make sure this foil tape is up here. We don't want any flaps in the way. We kind of want to make make sure all this is in place and we don't have a bunch of foil tape in our way. This is actually pretty clean on this one. We're going to grab one of the duct inserts. Now on the duct inserts we have this protective tape on the outside. This is a uh, sticky tape. So we're going to peel the backing off of it. Kind of tricky to do sometimes. Okay, so we got all three sides. All right, so we've got all our protective, uh, the, the protective tape off. Now this is sticky tape, all right? So we have to get this lined up before we actually stick it for good. So the way we're gonna do, we're gonna take this flat side here and this is going to be going over on this side, on this corner. What we typically do is insert the front side first and just kind of wiggle it into place. You might have to put your finger up there and get some of the oil tape out of the way and push up on the ducting, but it'll go in just like that. So that's that one. Okay, so here's the second one. We gotta get our protective tape off of this one. <laughs> this one's tearing a little bit on me. Okay, all right, we got this one. All right, so let's get this one up here in place. Remember, we want to start at the front here and kind of guide it into place. Kind of work it into the ducting, just like that. So that one's in. Okay, so the next thing we want to do, we want to grab the kit here. As we look at the kit, this slope here goes towards the front of the air conditioner. Easiest way to install this, we put it up at about a 45 degree angle and we just kind of slide it up into place. That's what it looks like in up in place there. So the next thing we're going to do that should stay in itself. So the next thing we do, we take one of the bolts and start it into the into one of the front bolt holes up here. And we want to hold this plate in this plate, the anchor plate in place. So, so just tighten this gently. So we grab another bolt. Let's do the opposite side in the front. That way we can see the bolt hole. We can see where we're tightening. This also helps align, align the back of it. All right, here's the next one. Sometimes you have to wiggle the bolt around to find the bolt hole. It should be pretty simple to find them. At this point, everything is probably pretty much self-aligning. Now, whenever we tighten the air conditioner, we want to tighten the air conditioner. We want to tighten these lag bolts. Um, if you look up in the front here, up in this area, you'll see the air conditioner gasket right here. Tightening the air conditioner, there's there's a couple there's a couple of things that we need to keep in mind. First of all, we want to use a crisscross pattern. Okay. Now, whenever we retighten these, we want to tighten these to where they just make contact, and we want to turn these about six turns total each one. So you kind of want whenever you re retighten the whole air conditioner down, you want to kind of alternate between the the bolts. And I've got my drill set here, and we'll kind of tighten these, get them tight a little bit. And we want to make sure that we compress the air conditioner gasket evenly. So what we want to do, we want to tighten these bolts no more than about six turns total. And we 
we'll go on this side we'll tighten this one up we had already tightened this one a little bit so we'll get to this one and then this last one here all right that's it the kit is installed now on reassembly it's pretty simple <laughs> my there it is okay so we grab our square drive again and we want to grab our cover plate here now I've got a magnetic um, tip on here so it'll hold it'll hold the screw a little bit so you hold the cover plate back into place find the screw there for the all right start one but don't tighten it all the way we want to be able to leave it loose enough to where we can find the screw holes on the other side. I typically do the opposite side. Alright, last Alright. Let's give these another, another little tight in be good all right we're good okay let's reinstall our filters here just kind of slide them into the channel and remember whenever you're installing these covers you've got these little these little uh, these little tabs here so these go on the bottom side you have these two little tabs here that go into the cover just kind of snap these into place like that. Okay, same thing. The tabs are pointing down, and our alignment tabs here go into the cover, and then snap the center one, and we're all done. So now we can turn the air conditioner on, and I'm just turning the fan on right now. Alright, so appreciate you all sticking with us and watching the videos. Now a couple of things that I wanted to clarify, um, when it comes to the install, um, I saw a couple of questions pop up. Um, how do you identify your air conditioner? Because the model number that's given on the air conditioner uh, um, identification plate, um, it's not going to tell you whether it's a Mach 3 or a 15 or what it is. Kind of the easiest way to tell which air conditioner you have, kind of walk away from the side of your rig and just, you know, kind of get a visual, uh, a side profile view of the air conditioner. Now, we've got a picture of the air conditioners on the website. So, you know, if the cover that you're seeing on top of your air, your rig is, if that's the same cover that's matched with, the, uh, with what's on the website, you know, you're good to go. Uh, so the one kit that we've been talking about here covers the Mach 3, the Mach 15, and the Mach 10 uh, Coleman air conditioners. Um, Eric, or uh, Grand Design, Grand Design stopped using Dometic air conditioners a couple of years ago. Uh, so all the air conditioners you're going to be seeing on the Grand Designs are all going to be the Coleman's. Um, there is another model Coleman air conditioner that Grand Design has been using um, some and that's the Mach 8. The Mach 8 is a really low profile um, air conditioner. And when you look at the side view of it, it's it's very, very different cover. So it's it's pretty easy to tell which one it is. Um, let's see, I saw, um, uh, as far as a link to the video, if you go to our website, there is a link to the video, to the YouTube video on the website itself. But even if you go to, to YouTube, just type in RV Airflow and it's going to come up. And um, so I want to show you, I want to show you the new product here. I got it right, right here beside me. So you notice in the video, I got a, oh, it's not showing it, Jarrett. It just shows me. Yeah, sometimes the uh, virtual uh, background doesn't show up that well. If you <laughs> that's kind of it in front of your chest, <laughs> it'll show up better. That's kind of interesting. Okay, 
So anyway, the new, the new product, the new commercial product is white. You notice the, in the video, the product was black, okay? So that's the easiest way to tell what you have. I mean, since June, since June, we've been producing this new product. So the new product, the new commercial grade product is gonna be white in color. So pretty easy to tell which one you have. Um, uh, like I said, you know, it, it does wonders for the performance of these air conditioners. Now, you know, it's right smack in the middle of summertime. So um, I've had a lot of questions on, well, you know, I've got a heat pump, you know, how does it work on the heat pump mode? Uh, well, I can tell you with our own rig here, our center air conditioner is a heat pump. Most of the time, well, not most of the time, as long as the outside ambient temperature is above 45 degrees, I don't need any other kind of heat source inside this rig. I just turn that, that heat pump on. And also, I mean, in, in the bedrooms, since it's such a smaller confined area, we have to keep the vents closed in the bedroom. Otherwise, we, get, we just get burned out. You know, I mean, it, it, it gets way too hot in the bedroom. So we, in the heat pump mode, these air conditioners work phenomenally well. Um, there's also been some questions um, about, well, I've got two air conditioners on my rig. Do I need one or two units? Well, think about this. If you've got one air conditioner that's blowing 40 or 50 percent more air than the other one, you're going to cause a pretty serious imbalance of air throughout the ducting system. So you've got the one air conditioner with the kit in it that's completely overpowering the other one. Um, so our advice, you know, to balance the air better, it is better to have both kits in. And um, so I just wanted to clarify that just a little bit. Um, let's see. I'm not sure that I forgot every, anything. Um, I think that's all my notes. Um, okay, yeah, that's all my notes. If anybody has any questions, like I said, just call me. Um, you know, I've answered phone calls on Saturday or Sunday nights, you know, at 10 o'clock in the evening. Now, if you call at 10.01, I'm probably not gonna answer the phone. Okay, I'll answer my phone on the weekends and during the week up till about 10 o'clock. <laughs> so, you know, if you have any questions, if, if any of you order a product and you've got any kind of installation issues or any, uh, any questions or concerns at all, just call me, you know, I'll, I'll take care of everything. You got a question in the uh, chat box, Richard. Uh, how do you ship them by UPS or postal service? Okay. Um, yeah, I've got to have my old man glasses on so I can see that the, the chats. I can't see them with that. <laughs> uh, so we do ship everything. The, the product is manufactured in Indiana. It is shipped out of Indiana and it is shipped via UPS. Yeah. And uh, uh, Frank and Dolores are asking, are you going to plan on being at the NorCal rally if we're still able to have the NorCal rally? The, the Which one? The NorCal rally in September. Oh, oh, the, the, uh, the Northern North California. California, North California. Uh huh. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to be at that rally. Um, you know, this this whole COVID thing, you know, has really kind of put a damper on on different things, and we've got other commitments at that time. You know, we we wish we could be everywhere in one. You know, but we just can't. We can't make all the rallies, unfortunately. But you know, it is possible. We're we're kind of working through some. Well, I don't want to overcommit myself, so I probably, I'm 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 guilty of getting myself in trouble. I, I I overcommit myself, and then that comes back and bites me later. You know, <laughs> so. Uh, but the answer to that question is no. We have no plans of attending the North North. Well, your California rally. I wish we could. Uh, let's see, David's asking, where do you enter the promo code on your website to get that discount? So whenever you go to the shopping cart, whenever you start shopping, uh, uh, it should take you through and it's gonna ask you for promo code for the discount. Okay. And so during that field, you just you just enter that promo code, uh, GD, um, 
what was it again? I, I even forgot here. Uh, the GD, uh, uh, GD virtual rally. rally. Yeah, remember it's all caps, no spaces. Okay. And Jerry's asking, do you need to unplug your AC when you're doing the installation? Okay, you know, that's a good question. Um, first of all, I'd say no, you do not have to unplug the air conditioner. Uh, just make sure that the air conditioner is turned off, okay? You don't have to do anything with the wiring. Um, you don't have to disconnect any wiring at all. So it's completely safe to install without having to disconnect any wiring. Okay, and Carol's asking, does all the air go to the ducts and none out of the bottom of the unit? Okay, another great question. All right, now, because, well, let me, let me back up just a little bit. The air shower plates, you know, you open those two little vents in the, in the bottom of the air conditioner plate and it dumps all this air right into that one little space. That's actually the number one cause for evaporators freezing up. Um, so whenever I started all this, you know, um, so our product does eliminate those air, the air shower capability, all right? But as I said, that's kind of the, you know, that's one of the worst things we can do to the air conditioner anyway. So it delivers 100% of the air from the air conditioner strict or straight into the ducting system. So it does eliminate those air showers. And one of the questions that hasn't been answered, but I've noticed since we've got it installed in ours, can you explain the the side effect, I guess, is what you were explaining to me of the sound level when you get these installed? Yeah, yeah. You know, whenever I started all this, um, I wasn't looking for, for quietening the air conditioner down. I just, I was just trying to wake, make the wife happy and just give her better airflow throughout the system and just get the, the, um, just get the air conditioners working, working better. But with a side benefit, I noticed that the air conditioner was significantly quieter. Now we have a, our rig is technically a 2017. So it's got the older style uh, Coleman ceiling assembly in it which is a little bit noisier than, than the new singling assemblies, all right? But whenever, I went, but whenever I noticed this noise reduction, I put the air conditioner back to factory and I got a commercial grade and a, a, a decibel meter and I checked the, the reading. From the factory, my air conditioners were running about 66 decibels. After installing the kit, um, and this was the original product, okay, the original handmade product. It did lower the decibel level down to 61. 61, you know, it was bouncing between 60 and 61. Now, we don't advertise noise reductions a lot because that's not what RV airflow systems is all about. It's just one of those side benefits that comes along with it. Anytime you reduce friction, air friction, you're gonna reduce noise, okay? Um, now, what we discovered when we, when we finally had the new commercial product out, the newest product we have now, my air conditioners are running about 58, 59 decibels. So we've, we've reduced the noise level another, about another three decibels with this new product. And that's one of the reasons why we went to the three pound high density being the high density product that it is, the, the, the styrofoam basically, being such a high density, that's what's contributing to this additional noise reduction. So like I said, it's just, you know, it's kind of an added benefit, you know? So yeah, we're pretty happy with it. Wow. So do we have any more questions? I can put my glasses on and read that one. Okay, those, those questions was, was, was going off my screen before I could read them all. It says the top banner shows the discount code is GD Rally. This doesn't work, please repeat. Uh, it's GD Virtual Rally. 
Yeah, GD Virtual Rally. The GD Virtual Rally discount code, that's, a, that's good for 20%. It's a 20% off. GD Virtual Rally, yep. And the other question is, will this work without taking out the big, or without taking the big screws out? No, uh, the lab bolts have, have to come out because you have to remove that anchor plate, the big metal anchor plate. You have to remove that anchor plate. That's actually what holds the kit in place. Um, um, the back two lag bolts, on the air conditioner that actually goes through the kit itself to self-align it. So yeah, the lag bolts have to come out. Is it, aren't those the, the bolts also that hold the air conditioner to the roof? Yes, good good point. Yes, those lag bolts are, are about eight inches long. And yes, those bolts actually are what holds the air conditioner to the roof. But now, just to clarify something, I'm sorry? But don't do this in a windstorm. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, now we have to be politically correct. All right. So I know in the in the install video, I, I talk about tightening the, the bolts up about six turns. Okay. So we, we have to make sure that we comply with with air Excel on retightening the air conditioner. So technically, the torque specs on those anchor bolts is between 40 to 50 inch pounds. Now, you know, a bunch of us full-time RVers out there, we don't have those kind of tools. We don't have torque wrenches and stuff. Um, but basically what you're doing is, is, is compressing the air conditioner ga gasket, which is about one inch thick, the neoprene gasket. You're compressing that gasket about three eighths of an inch. And what I discovered when I was putting all this together is about six turns is what compresses that gasket about three eighths of an inch. Now, when you put it all back together, that kit is not going to move. I mean, it's sandwiched in that plenum area very well. It's not going to move. It's not going to deteriorate. Um, that's why I say, you know, that's why we offer an unconditional lifetime warranty. I don't care what happens if you're not happy with the product for any reason. We're just going to either refund the money or just replace it. Um, something else while I'm talking about that, some of the early grand design rigs, the ducting, when uh, the plenum, where the ducting comes in on the sides of the plenum, some of that ducting was a little bit forward from the very back of the plenum, about an inch and a half. So actually what that does is misaligns the ducting with our kit, all right? Um, I do have a procedure to correct this. So if anybody runs into this issue, call me. Call me on the phone and I'll walk you through that process, okay? Um, but you know, if you see that ducting misaligned or something, then don't don't worry about it. We can fix it. Okay. I mean, we all got to work together. You know. But um, yeah, once we make a small modification to that ducting and then put the kit in, then we're good to go. Cool. Do you guys do? Um, I guess kind of custom ones for the older ones. The the early 14s, 15s? Oh, and how long is your discount code good for? You know, um, I'm looking at the notes. I'm looking at my notes here. Um, actually, I don't really know. I didn't see that question coming. I should have. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to have to get an answer. I'll have to get an answer for that. Um, I'm, I'm positive it's through the weekend. It's good till Monday. If it's longer, and we'll, we'll have it posted on the website. I'll, I'll get that out. I'll get that question answered. And I'll, get it, I'll get it out there some way, somehow, how good this code is or how long this code is good for. Uh, let's see, are you going to be making a fridge mod? A, a refrigerator mod? Yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> um, they got an LOL. No, so. <laughs> no, let, let, me, let, let me answer this. Let me answer it this way. So Joanne told me after, after we started this business and, 
you know, of course, I had, in the beginning, I had no intentions of, of going this big, okay? Um, but she told me, Richard, don't invent anything else. This is enough. I don't want you to invent anything else. So as far as helping uh, RV refrigerators, she won't let me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, 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 we're stuck with this. Now, um, we are expanding our product line dramatically. In the last three weeks, we have added about 30 different model rigs from different manufacturers to the website. Um, so we're, we're, we're working pretty hard to expand our product line to fit other, other models with other manufacturers. So we're pretty happy about that. What else we got? Has anyone else got any any questions? Anyone want to take their mics off uh, mute and ask the question directly to Richard? I'll put my glasses on and yeah, y'all feel free. Yeah, un unmute and ask me anything you want. Okay, somebody just tell a joke or something then. <laughs> Three RVers walk into a bar. You think one of them would have at least saw it. <laughs> right. Well, listen, everybody. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure being, you know, it, it's, it's rewarding to work with Grand Design as a factory. They're good people. And I think we can all, we, we can all agree with that. What's even more rewarding for me is, is this Grand Design family, you know, going to the rallies and meeting everybody, um, you know, that, that's one of the biggest thrills. You know, we, we appreciate being a part of this family. Yeah. Oh, Neil just asked a question. Do you guys, uh, are you gonna look at sporting the older Dometic units? Yes, actually, well, yeah, I'm sorry. I, for, I totally forgot to bring that up. Um, as of this week, um, we did have some of the, we did have Dometic product that was handmade, you know, with the older product. Uh, we just got back our engineering prints and we have the first prototypes of the new manufactured Dometics. So yes, we do have the new Dometics and they'll be available on the market yeah, probably the end, the end of next week. So we'll, I mean, it's just right around the corner. Yeah. Excellent. Any other questions anybody has for Richard? Thank you for doing this. It was a great company story and I like the product. Thank you. We appreciate hearing that. Yeah, like I said, you know, I can't emphasize enough, you know, starting a small company like this, um, you know, introducing a product like this to the industry it has been a little bit of a challenge, honestly, um, because like I said in the beginning, you know, whenever I, whenever I talk about this, it, it's almost too good to be true. And, and I do realize how that comes across to most people. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's you guys out there, you know, that are, that are taking the chance and, and helping it. It's, it's all of y'all support that is helping us, you know, grow our little company here and get the word out. Um, you know, it, it's time that somebody, oh, sorry about that. It's time, you know, it's important, especially as, as full timers, you know, we want to be comfortable in our rigs and you know you know whenever it starts getting hot outside and we turn the air conditioners on you know it, it's time that somebody raised the bar in the industry a little bit and you know this has just simply been an oversight in the industry honestly um, nobody's ever looked at this issue in the industry i just accidentally came across it. Well, it was because Joanne was complaining we couldn't get the rig cool. I mean, that's what started all this. Um, so
so I spent, I spent, I don't know, eight months designing this and to, to get the, the air delivery perfect. Because I knew at some point that we was going to have to be facing Air Excel. We was going to have to go through all this testing. And I knew that ahead of time. Um, so that's why I spent so much time engineering this perfectly. Um, and, and something else I wanted to address, I, I know on uh, the, the Grand Design Modifications page, um, there's been some people that have um, made a similar product, uh, you know, the homemade versions of this. And I just want to tell those people, you know, congratulations. You know, I mean, that's what we, we, that's what I started doing. I mean, I just went to Walmart, grabbed some styrofoam and started cutting and shaping and all that. So I started out the exact same way. So, um, you know, I, I encourage people to do it yourselfers, you know, go for it. Uh, the only thing I will say about that is, um, you know, we, we've taken this to a little, di little different level, you know, a little bit higher level, um, offering it to the, the factories and also getting it tested with Air Excel uh, because there's no, you know, there's not another product like this on the market. So, you know, having that, that green light from Air Excel, being fully tested and approved by Air Excel was a big accomplishment for us with this product. Um, yeah. yeah, in our own testing, you know, we've got the 399 as well. And one of the campgrounds, since we're full time, one of the campgrounds we love going to only has 30 amp. And yep. this last uh, stint that we were there for two weeks, there was quite a few times. It was in the high 90s. And I sent Richard a, a picture of it. And one of those days, I think it was 98, 99 degrees out. And we can only run yeah. two air conditioners. We've got to put our our refrigerator on propane and our uh, water heater on propane. Otherwise, we're going to blow the, yeah. the breakers. And with just those two air conditioners going, we were still in the low 70s. It was decently comfortable inside. It was really no yeah. big deal. But there's yeah. no way without that increased airflow, we were going to get a 45-foot RV cooled down. And we're right in the middle. We didn't have any shade. So without that additional airflow, we couldn't have done it. We, we would have been cooler, but we would not have been comfortable. You know, that was a good point to bring up, Jarrett. So whenever we talk about boondocking or running off our generators or running off 30 amp, you know, one air conditioner now in, in this rig takes the place of two others, all right? Um, so whenever you're talking about 30 amp, that's a perfect example. You, you, it reduces the necessity of running multiple air conditioners. And whenever you're out boondocking, um, you know, and you, you know, you run that generator, you know, it's pretty difficult to run two air conditioners on a generator, on a 5,500 watt generator. Um, and we've been in plenty of situations in the last couple of months where we've been out boondocking um, with our travels and I'll start the generator and I'll, I'll run, I'll turn on one air conditioner and we're, we're perfectly comfortable in the rig. And we're talking temperatures, you know, 90, 95 degrees. Um, and one air conditioner keeps the rig down to about 75, just running off the generator. Yeah. So, you know, you're, you're reducing, you're reducing um, um, electrical costs, no matter how you look at it, you know. And I'll tell you what, you know, from you know, whenever you're running off the generator, whenever you try to run two air conditioners off the generator, man, it just sucks the gas on that generator. Um, but whenever you're only running one air conditioner, you know, your fuel consumption on that generator is going to be cut in half as well. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's, like I said, there's a lot of different ways to look at this. Um, but again, you know, I'm not here to try to sell the product. This is what it is. You know, if you order a kit, if you're not happy with it, that's where the, the our warranty comes in, unconditional lifetime warranty. Uh, but I would ask, you know, before you return the kit, if you have to, if you have any questions, call me first, talk to me. <laughs> All right. Um, compatibility with some of the older uh, Grand Design rigs, the 2014s and 2015s. Um, 
so yes, Grand Design pretty much made the whole ceiling architecture the same. The only thing that we saw a change in uh, with some of those earlier rigs is, is where they positioned the ducting that we already talked about earlier, where the ducting is a little bit forward in the plenum. Uh, but like I said, you know, I've got, a, I've got a procedure for that, so we can fix that little issue. And so that's not really that big a deal. Well, great. All right. Well, I think that's it if there's no other questions. Well, all right. Looks like no other questions. Oh, Richard, I'd like to thank you for coming out and everybody for listening to the presentation and helping us learn how to keep cool. Now we just got to get you to, a, well, if we just got to get everybody out to a physical rally again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like everybody, we, we, miss, we miss the rallies. Yeah, this is fun. And Jared, I can't, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you going through all this trouble, everything that you've done to make this virtual rally happen. That's, that's really cool that you've done this. Yeah, it's fun. It's my playground. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> all right, like I said, if anybody has any questions or concern, you've got my phone number, just give me a call. And um, we'll be more than happy to take care of you. So we're going to sign off here. Everybody out have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'm sure at some point we'll see you at a rally, you know, sometime. All righty. Well, thank you very much, Richard. <laughs>